All right, good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health, trying a new streaming software. And uh, I was unsuccessful last night, but it looks like today it might be working. So any of you watching, give me a thumbs up to let me know that you hear me and that the video is good. So uh, today I'm gonna be talking about infection and autoimmunity part one. Uh, I'm going to do a series on this going through a variety of rheumatological disorders and discussing these as they pertain to infections in the body because in the world of rheumatology, the mainstream route is to give people medications which tend to shut off the immune system or block a specific immune reaction, whereas the functional rheumatology world is to say, okay, well, what is the root of the problem? Which uh, some practitioners may say, you know, that's a little cheesy, maybe it's too simplistic, but maybe it's not. And as I go through this series, particularly on rheumatoid arthritis, you'll probably get a feeling that there are some big things that I think a lot of RA patients are not being told out there. So before I get into that, uh, thank you all for joining. Hello, hello, and, uh, and thank you for being here with me. All right. So let's show this one. I'm going to hide this one. Okay. So this article uh, termed host microbiota interactions and rheumatoid arthritis. Here's an article where they're talking about this bacteria called Porphyromonas gingivalis. And I'm going to minimize myself just so you Perfect. All right. So good to know. Thanks, everybody, for helping. <laughs> Appreciate it. So what I was saying is that these periodontal bacteria, uh, we're finding more and more evidence that they can really impact rheumatoid arthritis, like significantly. And as is referred to here in this, in this diagram, Porphyromonas gingivalis, as well as actinomyces uh, types of bacteria, are uh, very influential in the production of antibodies seen in rheumatoid arthritis. Those antibodies seen uh, are the rheumatoid factor, which is actually not as diagnostic for rheumatoid arthritis as you would think. Basically, most patients with rheumatoid arthritis uh, have a positive rheumatoid factor, but a lot of other people do too. And so the very sensitive and specific test for rheumatoid arthritis is what is referred to as the CCP antibody. And what they're labeling here is ACPA, are antibodies to citrullinated proteins. And so the cyclic citrullinated peptide or protein antibody, uh, the CCP antibody is what is seen in rheumatoid arthritis. It is involved in the specific immune reaction of rheumatoid arthritis where individuals get a lot of joint swelling, in their metacarpals, maybe their proximal interphalangeal joints, their carpals, their wrists, their neck, you may have problems in their elbows, maybe their sacroiliac joints and ankles and areas like that. As I talk about these autoimmune diseases, I'll try to give you a joint distribution because it is most interesting that each autoimmune disease seems to have its own distribution of joint involvement or a particular joint involvement. So nonetheless, uh, I think that's interesting. So going on, the CCP antibodies, which create a lot of the inflammation amongst other things in the joints of RA patients, can stem from periodontal bacteria. It can stem from what researchers are thinking are uh, changes in gut bacteria as well, which I'll talk about in the next broadcast, and there's even research that there's a bacteria that probably migrates from the gut to the urinary tract, which also, also is involved in the rheumatoid arthritis reaction. Okay, let's go. So that's the article I was just talking about, Experimental and Molecular Medicine, 2019. Okay, I think I had um, some others in here. Yeah, so this is a really nice article out of Pathogens, I think from 2020. And here they're talking about the systemic impact of this mouth bacteria, Porphyromonas gingivalis. And they talk about how it can interplay with diabetes, even Alzheimer's, depression, but I won't go into any of that. 
very interesting, they say, very interestingly, they said, many periodontal bacteria, particularly Porphyromonas gingivalis, were detected in synovial fluid from patients with RA at the DNA level. What that means is that they've gone in to the joints of rheumatoid arthritis patients, extracted fluid out, and then basically probably doing PCR testing and seeing that they're finding the DNA of bacteria from the mouth in the joints. I don't think that's information that a lot of people know about, but that's pretty important. So bacterial DNA from the mouth in the joints of RA patients, not there in healthy controls. And then they go on to say antibodies or autoantibodies against citrullinated proteins are confirmed to be one of the pathological bases. Porphyromonas gingivalis is the only microorganism known to express the PAD enzyme. What is PAD? It stands for peptidyl arginine deaminases, and it is the enzyme that causes the citrullination of these proteins. So what does all that mean? It means that there's a mouth bacteria seen in periodontitis, Rheumatoid arthritis patients have a much higher incidence of periodontitis. And this mouth bacteria has the enzyme. It's the only bacteria that has the enzyme that causes the specific immune reaction seen in rheumatoid arthritis. And scientists are thinking maybe it's happening here, but also maybe because the bacterial DNA is found in the joints, it's happening there as well. And I've talked about this for years and we're just seeing more and more evidence concluding the same thing. Uh, okay, let me go through here. All right, so then this is a really cool article out of the University of Leeds um, in the UK. And what did they look at? They basically evaluated um, a variety of, of individuals. One group was CCP positive. So, one thing we see, very similar to other autoimmune diseases, is that individuals will start to show CCP antibodies before they develop rheumatoid arthritis. Just like people will start to have thyroid antibodies before their thyroid goes kaput and they're not able to make thyroid hormones. So there can be this preclinical Hashimoto's thyroiditis phase and then hypothyroidism. Other individuals, they just stay in this chronic phase of euthyroid Hashimoto's. But here, with rheumatoid arthritis, there's this phase of maybe a couple years where people will be CCP antibody positive. And they looked at those individuals and then they looked at early rheumatoid arthritis patients and then they looked at controls. And they, in essence, looked at the same time at periodontal pathogens, specifically Porphyromonas gingivalis. And basically the conclusion of the study was that the anti-CCP positive individuals had much more periodontitis as the individuals transitioned into early rheumatoid arthritis, they weren't seeing as much of the periodontal infection, but it seems like there is a link between this periodontal infection and the induction of these anti-CCP antibodies, which will then evolve into rheumatoid arthritis. So what do you do about it? Uh, let me see here. I think I have it here. So this study, I couldn't post it because it, um, was not to be posted publicly, but here's the link. Uh, and in this, you can pause the video if you want. In this article, I mislabeled it as periodontal surgery. They didn't do periodontal surgery. They did some other procedure. I'm not a dentist, but they did some other procedure for the periodontitis and they saw RA patients improve in terms of their symptoms with the periodontal procedure. So take home point. Uh, if you know someone with rheumatoid arthritis, say, how is your oral health? What are you doing for your oral health? Have you seen, uh, you know, a, a dentist? Have you seen an integrative dentist? Have you seen um, a periodontal surgeon? These are things probably to really check out, aside from smoking, um, to really check out if you have rheumatoid arthritis. And as I showed you in this diagram, you know, uh, basically, rheumatoid arthritis is multifactorial. Smoking does have a really big relationship with it. Hormones have a relationship with it. I'll talk about Epstein-Barr virus, which seems to have a relationship with it. But definitely, this mouth bacterial connection cannot be ignored. So 
Um, I really appreciate all of you joining. Um, thank you so much. And I, I think that's it. I think that pretty well summarizes the topic. So now I just have to figure out how to end this presentation. So happy weekend, everyone, and talk to you soon.